Denmark out of the euro but pegged to the euro. Money wanted in. Denmark dropped its benchmark rate below zero. It worked. Now, new problem. Denmark does not have enough debt. It has a liquidity problem. Yesterday, Bloomberg caught up with Lars Rota. He is the head of Denmark's central bank. Seems pretty laid back about it. Again, I, we have to admit that the, uh, that the liquidity in part of uh, uh, partial parts of, of the market has declined. Uh, the government bond market is not as liquid as it used to be. That said, I don't see any kind of risk of that uh, sort because uh, the, in general, the liquidity position of the Danish financial system is in very good shape. Uh, the liquidity, the currency uh, uh, holdings of the Danish. Uh, central bank is obviously uh, quite high, so I don't see any uh, uh, risk at present, at least, uh, for, for this kind of development. Now, the real issue in, uh, in Denmark is not that. The real issue is immigration, which drove this election. And the real surprise was a far-right party, uh, which campaigned against immigration, won a vote that no one thought they were going to win. And this is one of the biggest issues in Europe today along with youth unemployment is a whole immigration question. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, I mean, this is exactly what's going on. Bill Rhodes with us actually talking about the politics of Denmark. That election uh, on, on Friday really uh, is, uh, is the same story that we've been seeing all over Europe politically. People are dissatisfied with what's been happening at the European level. Uh, we have Lisa Bramowitz with us from Bloomberg. She uh, covers the debt markets and has been actually sounding the alarm about liquidity uh, for uh, about a month now. Um, what I'm fascinated like a by... A couple years. A couple years now, sorry. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> hey, you win. All right. We're gonna, you've been looking for your superhero name. I've decided your superhero name is the liquidity lady. Um, help, Tony at Stark. <laughs> um, uh, so the Danish Central Bank is kind of not worried about liquidity. That's what I'm fascinated by. Everybody else is worried that they don't have enough in the market. Danish Central Bank says, eh, we're okay. We've got a lot of currency. We're good. Okay. So he used liquidity to refer to like three different things in that little segment. And I okay. think that it's really important to distinguish what exactly he's talking about with the various words of liquidity. Yeah. First, he's talking about the ability to trade Danish uh, government debt, right? And that, the, that it's actually getting harder to do that because they're selling less debt. Mm -hmm. And because, frankly, it's becoming a little bit more volatile because of what's going on with the macro European region and because of the fact that they don't want it to be too much of a safe haven. So they're actually making it more yeah. difficult uh, for, for hedge funds to just rely on it as a mm -hmm. safe haven asset. Um, but then he was also talking about the fact that central banks have essentially been pumping money into the system de facto by not issuing government bonds and yeah. by dropping benchmark rates lower. So those are two different things, but they both pose different problems for the system. But it just to show liquidity is a complicated term, and he it himself is. used it in many different ways in that little thought. And what that was interesting, what you're talking about with, you know, with central banks buying up government debt, Denmark stopped issuing debt. And this is what here, he actually calls it a soft QE. Let me go back to the, to the tape there. We don't know. Uh, uh, we will... Uh, it is our version of QE uh, by stopping the, the, the uh, sale of, of government bonds. It has exactly the same uh, impact as uh, having the government issuing government bonds and then the central bank buying it. Uh, so uh, we will go on with this uh, at least, uh, or we can go on with this uh, at least uh, until uh, 2016 because uh, of the four uh, pre financing of Danish government did. Bill Rhodes, this is, you know, Denmark has a unique problem. It's a little country, but it's a responsible country. So it, just like other countries, has trouble m figuring out how much capital should come in, how much capital should stay out. This is a universal problem. Well, I think, I think throughout Europe this is a problem, and I think you pointed it out very, very well on, on uh, this whole liquidity issue uh, because of uh, what's going on with the ECB. Uh, their whole, uh, you know, uh, uh, quantitative easing uh, mm -hmm. program, the doubts in Greece, right. uh, these political issues that we're talking about, all of this, I think, creates a lot of action and volatility. Yeah. We can't forget that we have tremendous volatility in the markets. Uh, uh, at least the hot money doesn't just flow south, it flows north as well. What this shows is, despite how responsible a company is, it can't avoid the currency wars. Exactly. Got to, like, you play cannot. It. Every country has to play this game. All right, Lisa Bromowitz, thank you for coming on Talk About Denmark.